Okay, uh, I am so excited. First of all, uh, thank everyone for joining. Hello, everyone. Hey. Uh, <laughs> and right there, Terry Egioma made a commitment. This is a couple of weeks ago that we were going to come in and we were going to be uh, talking about what she did the previous week in this hub challenge that you guys, a lot of you joined. Uh, we ended up having, I think, think 300, you'll tell us everything, $300,000 yes. to trade with. Every mm -hmm. week we're going to come in, she's going to tell us what she did, what she thought about, how, you know, how much money she made, where she had losses, what she could do. Oh this God. is going to be amazing. <laughs> I, I got up this morning, I was like, oh, Terry, I, just, I don't think anyone's ever done this before. I've never been able to dig into the weeds of yeah. how genius <laughs> works. So I'm excited. Thank you, Terry Ijeoma. Uh, trade and travel. Uh, mm -hmm. Invest with Terry. She does all of that on Instagram. I am an investor. Uh, check her out. Follow her because she's dope. All right, I'm yeah. gonna change the view so you can get busy. And it looks like Imani investor, which is which is like so awesome because it's faith investor. I didn't even plan it like that. I was just doing like the the Ebonics. I'm an investor, and now it's like, wait, Imani means faith. That's awesome. <laughs> Look at God. Look at God. right. <laughs> All right, you got a lot of little things up here. You got, uh, <laughs> what is this, a chart? Okay, so before yes. we get into the, the, okay, the, okay. the, the all right, when we, we, we envision having a million dollars to trade with, and you're, you're, the way you teach people is that you, you, you can make 1% or your, your goal should be 1% of your total amount that you invest every day you should be able to make in the stock market, which I think yes. is not a lot, right? So if you have $1,000, you should be able to make ten dollars a day, something like that. Yes, right. Yes, okay. yes, and it's an average. So that doesn't mean you have to trade every day, but your goal should be on average you're making about one percent a day when you're actively investing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we were gonna do a million dollars, but we got. And I said to you, because Terry's like, should we wait? I was like, no, whatever we get. And 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 for the record, these are people who were taking the class anyway. So yes. you just came into the class under the Hub Challenge. Terry graciously took the people who came in under the Hub Challenge put that money in a separate account of all of the people that take your class, thousands of people, mm -hmm. and you're trading with this money for this specific thing, which is to train journalists uh, globally, you know, throughout the diaspora to start telling some stories that we haven't seen before. So I thank you again for taking up this challenge. Okay, so how did you approach it? Tell us about, you know, how you thought about this differently or was it the same as what you normally do in your trading life? Well, so I definitely am doing the investitory method. So the way that I trade, I have like seven steps that I follow every time I take a trade. That's still the same. That has not changed. Um, because we had about 300000 our goal is $3,000 a day on average. So that means that I could make 3000 on one trade or I could do a swing trade that's like 15000 and that'd be my goal for the week. Um, I very much am a person that I don't want to watch the screen every day. So once I hit the goal, I left it alone. And you're going to see that when I show you the slides. Like there's one trade, actually both of my trades that I did this week, I did in less than 20 minutes. It was like woke up, traded, hit the goal. All right, let's go about the rest of my day. Um, and I think that's important because I don't want people to be staring at the computer. The goal is to have freedom. Like that's why I did trade and travel so I could have freedom to live my life. So yeah, that's that's how we're approaching it. And let me just say, um, I'm gonna go back to this gallery view because, you know, as we were thinking about it, I'm gonna raise money anyway. I'm gonna work, hustle, do some book deals or something to 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 get the money to do the things that I want to do. But this was an opportunity for me as somebody that sits on a platform every day where my goal is to inspire people to live their best lives. This is a way for people, yes, we're gonna get money to do the things because I, I know that you're badass. But there are gonna be people out there who never thought about investing in the stock market, who never thought it was possible, who thought it was beyond them, who thought it was too difficult, who didn't wanna sit in front of a screen all day, who, you know, and there are people who are sitting home as I looked at the unemployment numbers last week, who may not have a job to go back to because the world has changed forever. Yeah. And for them, this may be an opportunity to free themselves in another way. So my goal, my hope is, yes, that Terry Egioma is wildly successful and that we have the money that we need to go out and hire people and invest in journalists. But the real goal is that there are millions of people out there from, who've never traded before, who've been very unsuccessful trading, who now will see every week through what you're doing that is possible. 
All right, so that's all. Yeah. Let's see. I, no, I, I'm so with you, Karen. Like, I hope that this inspires people. Like, I'm excited to share what I did this week just because, like, one, they'll get to see, wow, there's a Black girl that really is trading and making money. Yes, that's true. Oh, you can actually be an active investor. You don't have to buy and hold. Yes, yes, true. Oh, I can do this for my goals. Yeah, like, and, and I want them to know, too, like, we're trading 300000 but just imagine, even if you were trading thirty thousand, well, just take a take a zero off of whatever I made. If I made twenty six thousand, well, you could have made two uh, thousand six hundred. That's still extremely great. Or week. take another zero for off week. for the oh. week. Yeah, no, for the week. <laughs> for the week. We haven't even for told you how much we made, but yeah, like that's for the that's, week. That's the kind of stuff. And then even if you're like, well, I don't have thirty thousand. That's okay. We'll take another zero off. If you were at 3000 well, that's still $260 that you would have made this week. That adds up. So everything that we show you, I just hope that it inspires some people and just really shows them that trading is an option. And we do have, like you were saying, like people that got laid off, we have lots of students in our, in our program and trade and travel that either got laid off or that actually got sick. I have several students that had coronavirus, so they were at home in quarantine, and that gave them time to actually look at the course. Now they're like, Terry, I'm making an extra $100. Some of them actually, actually saw a testimony today. He was like, Terry, I make an extra four to $600 a day off of what you showed us. And, and then at least twice a week, I hit the $1,000 in a day club. I was like, that right there is revolutionary. So yes, yeah, so I just hope, I hope we inspire some people and expand their mindsets. Me too. All right, so so what are we doing? What are, what are these okay. uh, moments, account update, close, trade, <laughs> all right, walk us through this, Terry. I'm so excited. I love learning new technology, and so this is this is Prezi. Um, I, okay, so I'm, I'm super big on, like, if I'm going to do it, it's going to look nice, and it's going to be, like, the best that I can do. So this was so fun to put together. Um, so, all right, you ready? Yeah. So sure. this is the Hub Challenge Week 1. And, um, oh wait, let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning. There we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I was playing with it early. I was playing with it early. Hold on. <laughs> hold on, I'm gonna go back. Don't get, don't get sick, don't get sick. There we go. Let's start the agenda. So, uh, <laughs> Karen, I know you're probably laughing at me. I can't even see your face. <laughs> I, I, but, I'm all right. <laughs> so this is what we're going to talk about, and I promise this will only take about 10 minutes, but um, first we'll do a quick introduction because I want you guys to know a little bit more about who I am. Like you've seen me on the Karen Hunter show, but you probably, if this is your first time of exposure, you're going to get a little introduction to what this whole challenge is about. Then we're going to do an account update. So I'll show you how we did in the Hub Challenge, how much money we made this week, how much we're able to donate now to the nonprofit. Then we'll do a trade spotlight. I felt like this should be a teaching moment. So I'm gonna show you a trade that I was expect, uh, exceptionally proud of, or even in the future weeks, it might be a trade that goes wrong, but we're gonna talk about it. And then we'll do some teaching moments. I'll tell you my key takeaways from those things and then final thoughts. And then so Karen, pause you, in, pause. Uh -huh. you know that Terry was an educator. I just, I'm just, we just know that you were an educator. Yeah, so yeah. You. My, so before I left for, for traveling, I was an assistant principal of an elementary school, and I never was in the classroom, but literally for 10 years, I had been in the admin. So even my first job in education was in Teach for America's admin. I was over the conferences that, tra that train teachers, excuse me, that train teachers how to teach. So you can't be around that for three, four years and not learn how to teach. So yes, yeah, so this is this is the agenda for today. Now let's go a little bit into my intro. So as I said, I'm Terry Gioma, and I've been trading since 2010. So I've been trading for 10 years. Some of you guys are gonna see what I'm doing today and you're gonna feel like, man, I'm gonna jump in right now. Just know I've been trading for a little while now. So some of these things are, are from experience, but I'm teaching you so that you can get there too. Another thing is I'm a graduate of MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I went there and I majored in management science. Um, everybody asked me like, why didn't you become an engineer? Because I wanted to manage the engineers. I was gonna be their boss, like that's why. <laughs> also at the time, MIT had the number two graduate program in the country. So like, yes, I, I didn't do engineering, but I did all the math and sciences. I'm still just as smart. 
And then I also got a master's degree from Dallas Theological Seminary. So what I like to say is I learned how to calculate from MIT, but I learned my compassion and communication from Dallas Theological Seminary. So I know how to preach. I know how to talk to people. And, and that's been a blessing to build the, the, to bridge the two. Other things, I worked in education for 10 years. Like I said, my last job was assistant principal of an elementary school. And then I'm the founder of Trade and Travel, which is an investing, um, online investing curriculum in school where we teach people how to trade with risk management and technical analysis and like really get the tools to be successful in trading and investing. All right, so here are the goals. So our goal is to make 450,000, like we're raising capital, $450,000 for the hub. And um, the hub, at, well, Karen, real quick, do you wanna say what the hub is one more time? Okay, hold on. Yes, so, um, you know, I have been a journalist, oh wow, since the 90s. <laughs> and um, Pulitzer Prize, Polk Award, and what I've learned over the last, and I teach journalism at Hunter College, for the last 17 years before that NYU. And I am really disgusted by the lack of journalism that, that I'm seeing, particularly in places where we exist. So you're gonna hear all of the bad news, but I want some of the inspirational stories. Like we just did a piece on a kid who, a young man, a man who has an anime, uh, an anime firm, one of the only black owned anime firms in Japan. I want more of those stories, right? He's in Japan, yes. the black man from New Jersey, who is killing it out there in the anime, you know, animation, you know, that that um, that space, which is really, really popular in Japan. There are stories like, like I mentioned, the um, Jamaican stock market, one of the best, best stock markets in the world that we can't invest in in America. But what are some of the companies in there? Let's do some success stories. We need people on the, on the ground there who understand the culture. Because I also see sometimes we'll go into a place not knowing about it mm -hmm. and we'll assess it based on our lens. And I'm tired of us seeing things through somebody else's lens. And I'm tired of other people being seen through somebody else's lens. What's happening in France with expats and, and folks from Africa? What's going on in Nigeria? What's going on in Ghana? What's going on in Rwanda? Ethiopia, there are some amazing things going on in Ethiopia. And I want folk on the ground. So my, my vision is to train journalists wherever they are in their spaces to tell and report the stories that we don't often see. So that's the hub. And the hub is where it all comes in. Okay, thank you. I love it, I love it. I, um, I grew up on Sailor Moon, so I'm all about anime. <laughs> uh, I love that story. So, um, and so, and, 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 and Karen didn't mention this, but usually when you're raising funds for a nonprofit or for a startup, you're like the executive director has to go and ask a whole bunch of people and they have to go knock on doors and do presentations. And so what's really cool about this challenge is we're showing another way to raise capital. And I've been at venture capitalists, like I've, I've actually been a speaker on stages for venture cap um, conferences and one of the big things they ask me is Terry like how did you raise money for your business and I'm so excited when I can tell them I traded for that I didn't have to go ask a whole bunch of people I, I went to myself and said well what is my goal and how do I make money for it that's how I raise capital so this is to show like hopefully we'll start a movement with that as well all right so here's the plan so anybody who is a trader, you have to have a trading plan. And your trading plan tells you like, how do you trade? When do you take a trade? When do you exit a trade? What is your risk management plan? So here are some things in my trading plan for this challenge. One, we're trying to average $3,000 a day. The way that I found that is we, we initially started with 300,000 of capital. I took 1% of that and said, well, that's gonna be my daily goal. And we're not amortizing that number. So some people may say, oh, okay, well, your 1% will change every day. No, the way I do it is I start with that 1% and I keep it the same so that it can allow for, for losses. So this week I had more, I made more money than my goal, but next week I may have a loss. So I don't wanna keep changing the, the average or the daily goal, we're gonna keep it consistent. So that means for us, we're trying to make 15,000 a week, 60,000 a month, and then in five months, we'll double our, double our, well, I think I'm doing it for less than five months, 
the Lord be on my side. But um, <laughs> but in at least five months, we'll have doubled our account and then we'll try to go for even more. So we're trying to do 150% return on this account. I'm trading stocks and options. So some people may wonder what asset class, there's four asset classes, stocks, options, for, uh, Forex and futures. I'm choosing to do stocks and options just because I like companies and they make more sense to me. I'm a technical analysis trader. So you're gonna see that I'm looking at charts to trade. I'm not really a fundamentalist. So we're not gonna be talking about PE ratios. Most of the things that I'll show you is this is what the chart says. And my students will say that too. If I'm taking a trade, the first thing I, I'm going to look for is what does the chart say? And then the last thing is, I'm going to do this through day and swing trading. So there'll be some trades that are real quick in one day and others that I may let run for three to four days or, or a couple weeks even, but we can still achieve our goals. All right, so that's the plan. Now, do 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 drum roll, this is the account update. <laughs> So um, this week we made $26,775.90. And that's just oh. in this week. Yes. Well, and that is more than 1%. My little horrible math skills can even look at that and say, 15,000, that's almost 2%. Yes, yes. We are a little less than 30,000. We're almost two weeks ahead. <laughs> Um, you can see I'm all about time. I'm like, how quickly can we do this goal? Um, so yes, our account ended at 3000. Here, let me just show you some pictures. So year to date so far, this is just week one. We're up 26,775.90. That's 8.9% for the week. Now, I wanted to just stop and, and make a note here. If I was a broker, sometimes people say, well, Terry, why don't you know, why don't you just tell people to have someone else manage their account? And this is why. Usually the average for the stock market is eight to 10%. So if I was a broker and this was somebody's money I was managing, I just hit 8.9% in one week. And tell you the truth, I did it in two days. So I could have literally traded for two days, gave them their profit, and then traded the rest of the year with their money and not had to give it to them. So this is why I think it's important for you to learn this skill for yourself because you know, somebody else is managing it that as I'm not going to repeat myself, but like I hit the benchmark in one week. So I would have just been able to take, take their money the rest of the year and trade. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Karen? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And it's, you know, I think, um, and let me just go back to this. Oftentimes we think things are out of our reach and that, you know, so we rather hand over you know, we see this with athletes a lot, you know, they don't have time. We don't have time. I don't have time. So I'm going to hand it to somebody. And oftentimes that somebody, you know, who didn't have to get out at five o'clock in the morning, work out like you are, run those sprints, do those things. They're chilling. They're buying boats and planes and stuff off your money without having any of the skill. And then sometimes they steal from you. Mm -hmm. And then you look up and you're like, oh my goodness, one of the greatest lessons I think I learned from Oprah Winfrey is that she signs all of her checks. Even mm -hmm. if you're not doing this, you need to know where every dollar is, where every dollar is going, but how much more powerful are you if you learn how to do this for yourself? So even if you decide to hand it over, you need to be able to watch somebody because you know, watch from knowledge because folks can tell you anything. And I'd rather us have our own power in that. Even if you don't master it, even if you don't become a day and swing trader, you should at least know this skill so yeah. that if you do hand it over, you can say, oh, wait a minute, what did you do this week? You could check in on folk and put them and make them accountable to you. You can't exactly. do that without, without the knowledge. So thank you. Yes. And you know, this week, this was the fourth week that the S&P and Down have been negative for the week. The S&P and Dow, I don't know if I, I misspoke. But the S&P and Dow both have been negative for the past four weeks. And if you know how to trade or know this skill for yourself, that's when you would actually go to your manager and say, hey, are you able to, like, you can start, you know, telling them what to do. Hey, I want to put more money into my account right now because I know that prices are better. I know stocks have come into a better area. Or if the prices get real high, hey, I want to take a little bit off the table. But at least if you know the skill set, then you can actually start directing people in better ways. So Totally agree with everything you said. So just for picture's sake, I'm very much no picture, no proof. So this is our account balance. When we first started, it was 300,000. 
And then here's where you look up here at the account net worth. Y'all see it up here at the top? Mm -hmm. You see it? Okay. So that's where we were at the beginning of the week. Now we're at 326, $326,775.90. So that's where it is. And one thing that I will say, no, no, I'll keep going. I was going to show you some more about what these numbers mean. Actually, yeah, let me show you just real quick. So one thing that's really cool, and I tell people about this, and we might mention it in a little later too, but in, in my class, we have what's called a margin account. So the margin account allows me to trade with four times my actual cash amount. So you'll see down here where it says buying power, I have a bit more buying power than, um, than my actual account size. And so that's helping me to reach some of these bigger numbers. I was going to ask you if you were trading with just the 300,000 or if you were going to trade with the, the, the margin account. So yeah. The, like one thing, like, well, let's keep going because I'm actually show you a trade where I used margin and you'll get to see a little bit more about how it works. Yes, it is more risky and you, you might hear like people talk about margin calls, but if you do it correctly and you have a risk management plan, it's just an added tool in your toolbox. So you don't have to use it, but it's there if you need it. So, all right, so let's keep going and I'm actually going to show you like some more things. So once again, our goal versus current, our goal was 15,000 this week because we were going for 3,000 a day. We beat the goal by 11,000, more than 11,000. Um, we're still, as I said before, our goal is still 3,000 a day going into next week and we'll try to beat it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what it is. Look now, how righteous and cocky you are. You know, it's, it, you know, <laughs> people are like, she's so cocky. No, that's confidence. And we should never hide our lamps under a bed. So, you know, Terry is, is flexing because she can, but it's not from like, you know, ah, but like she, she's done the work. I'm so proud of you. All right, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm excited too. Like, I feel like when there's things that you're excited about, like a basketball player, if he's really good and he just won a game, like we don't expect him not to talk about the game. So why, why can't I talk about something that I'm excited about, you know? So go ahead, LeBron. Go ahead, LeBron. <laughs> All right now, so the, the, one of the trades that I want to spotlight for you guys is a trade that I did on Zoom. Quick little overview of it. Um, I made $4,790 on this trade. I entered at $466. I'm going to show you some pictures in a second, but I just want to show you a little bit or tell you about it first. I entered the trade at $466.36, and then I exited that trade at $471.16. I did this in less than 20 minutes. So I was able to make the 4,790 in less than 20 minutes. Wow. And here, yeah. And here's what happened. I'm gonna show you a play by play and then we'll go now into some- the stock. I'm sorry, this is the stock, the Zoom, the actual, we're on Zoom right now. This yes. is the actual Zoom that is traded on the stock market. Yes, this is Zoom. This company that we're using, they actually are publicly traded. So this is their stock. Yep, exactly. So here's the play by play. Y'all ready? I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to tell you kind of what happened. So here's my watch list. One of the things I noticed on Zoom is everything else was doing well. Well, not everything, but a lot of the heavy hitters that have been high flyers lately. So like Amazon, PayPal, AMD, all of those were doing really well. But then you come down here and look at Zoom. Zoom was down $34. And I was like, what is going on? That's the ZM yeah. at the bottom? That's the ZM at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and you see where it says like the stock price was 466, but underneath it, it says negative $34.53. Like all of a sudden it was dropping. And, and part of this, wait, wait, let me just go play by play and then we'll go through teaching moments. So I saw that it was dropping and I got in at 466 down here at the bottom. And I wish I had zoomed in. Next time I'll zoom in a little bit more. But I got in here and I actually bought a thousand shares, about a thousand shares down here at 466.37. And I know somebody's gonna say, dang, a thousand shares. Again, I'm a professional, I've been doing this for 10 years. So, um, <laughs> so just so you know. Then I put in a, an exit, so my target up here, and I was looking at charts. So I'm able to see from these candles where I want to get out of the trade. So I put in my um, exit here at 471 
the stock price rose up here. So as you can see, I got in here, it rose to here, and then I exited. It filled at 471. That gave me a profit of four, $4,790. So like that's literally what I did in less than 20 minutes. I was able to take this trade, bought low, sold higher, took the trade. All right. Now, did you do an automatic, like, so a market limit? So I, tr I don't day trade at all, but I'll trade for, like, I, I bought some stock this week and it was a popular stock and I traded at, I, it was down. And so I thought it was going to go back up. So I, I said I wanted it at a certain amount and it actually dropped another dollar, but then it went back up $3 after by the end of the day. Anyway, I got mm -hmm. it, but I put a GTC, you know, good to, to uh what is that good to cancel good. yeah good to cancel, good to cancel. Uh -huh. um, for, for the price that i wanted do you do that do you put a limit on there to say this is yes. the price it was automatic yes that little red see here let me come back again this little red thing right here that was a um i actually still did it as a day duration but this was a order that i just put in the computer and it would sit there until it was hit mm -hmm. okay. so you that way i didn't anything. have to sit and watch it Yep, that's right. That's right. Look at you, Karen. See, you be always talking about how you don't trade. And look, you did oh, a good I'm trade. Trading, but I'm not doing this day trading thing or the swing trading thing because my nerves are bad and I'm I'm a gambler in my spirit. It, so I have to manage my own uh, my own hubris. I have to manage it. It sounds like you traded Apple. Was that Apple? Yes, it was Apple. <laughs> Damn it. Why do you know that? It was because Apple. of the amounts. Okay. You said it went down a dollar and then went up three dollars. It was Apple. Yeah. That, that's what it did on oh, Friday. So, but again, let me just pause. This is how much you know your business. This is how much you know your thing that you knew that the thing that I traded this week was Apple. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I got it. It went down to 108 and then I got it at 109 because it was 110. I was like, I think it's going to go back down more. I didn't know it was going to drop that much. And then boop, it shot back up. And I was like, yay. But yes. I'm, I'm, I'm holding that for a minute because it just split. So I think it's going to keep growing. But that's, you know, and no trade what we trade. So can I just a disclaimer? Oh, yes. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. Mm -hmm. do, if you do what we do and you lose, that's on you. We this are is not for telling educational. You. Yeah. Yes. Educational yes. purposes only. Entertainment for those of you who are entertained. But don't do what we do just because we're doing it. So don't go into, oh, I'll put $1,000, a 1,000 uh, shares of Zoom, and I lost everything. Terry, you suck. No, you suck because you didn't take her class, and you don't know what you're doing, and you ain't been traded for 10 years. So don't, don't yes. listen to us in terms of what to do. This is all about the strategy and how to do. Okay. Yes. I had to say Thank you. No, that's perfect. And the thing is, too, like everything is about timing. So one of the things I told Karen is like, after I finish this, I'm going to go back and trade my account. Because when I took this trade on Zoom, like I can only trade one of them at that exact time. So I had to trade in this account and I, I missed it in my personal account because everything's about timing. Also, it's really important to look at charts. Zoom just went up $30 on Friday. So now's not the right time to buy it. You missed the opportunity. You had to have been able to see the charts ahead of time to see that it came into a level where we wanted to buy. So charts are important. Timing is important. And then, yeah, like somebody can give you an idea about a stock, but if you get in at the wrong time, that's on you. All right. All right. That is it. Let's continue. All right, so teaching moments. So out of this, I told you the, the Zoom trade. Here's a couple things I want you to take from that. And I tried, y'all, okay, I was trying to do alliteration and, and be smart on this. Um, I tried. No, you are trying to do an acronym. I mean, an acronym, yes, not alliteration, an acronym. It's the same letter, like alliterative um, acrimony or something like, you know, it's like AA, you know, you're, those, are, you know, you, you're the same letter at the, the beginning is alliteration. This that's is an right. acronym. All right. That's right. That's right. The preachers use the alliterations. We had to fight and they needed food. And they, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> but the, um, okay, so this is a acronym. Does that say that right? Yes. Okay. So um, the first thing so I, is smart. So the first teaching moment that I wanted to bring out from the Zoom trade is everything that you do in trading starts first with picking good companies. 
Um, I was able to take this trade and make money on it because I know that Zoom is a good company, but I found it on a bad day. So that's something that I often teach my students. You're looking for good companies on a bad day when they're having a bad day. And to be honest, um, I did leave money on the table. Like the, the next day it went up $30, but I'm trading for a goal. So I looked for that good company on a bad day and was able to make more than the $3,000 a day goal. All right. Next thing that I wanted to talk to you about is margin. And here, I think I have some pop-ins for this. So this is what I meant when I said a good company on a bad day. All the things on my watch list, I trade about 30 companies and I know them super well. Um, I, I don't trade everything. I have 30 companies. I know them like the back of my hand. That's why I knew that Karen was talking about Apple because it's on my list. Here's Apple right here. I knew, I knew what it did. Um, but all the things on here, a fundamental investor would probably also invest them for the long term right but i'm just trading in and out of my positions to make regular income um so that's what i mean when i say you're starting with good companies first but just on a bad day then with that margin piece so this is explaining a little bit more about how it works i bought a thousand shares and i think at this time that i took the picture i had sold some because it says that the total cost for this position is 384 but the principle is still the same I only had 300,000 in my account, but to take the trade, it cost me 384, which is about 84,000 more than my cash amount. Because I have a margin account, they let me use a little bit more to place this trade. I was in and out of it quickly. I didn't hold it overnight, so I don't have to worry about any margin calls. Um, if I did hold it overnight, they let you uh, hold up to two times your cash amount. And, and let me just note, many brokerages right now are changing their margin rules because they do have a lot of traders coming in that, that don't really know how to use it. So this may be different for your broker. I use a broker called TradeStation and my students use a broker called TradeStation too. So at this time, they still give four times their cash amount. But the goal is if you were to hold it overnight and use the bank's money, they would charge you a small interest. So it's almost like a line of credit on your house. If you use the money, they charge you an interest. But if you don't, then that's fine. It just sits there in your account. So this is, uh, this is how margin works. I used a little bit of, of the extra money in my account to place the trade, sold it, and now they got their money back and I have the extra money that I made on the trade. All right, so that's how margin Did works. Did they charge you interest on the 84,000? Did they charge you interest on that? No, if you hold it less than 24 hours, you don't have to pay any interest. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I told you I was in not this in 20 minutes, so I didn't have to pay nothing. <laughs> I did see though that I had like a little bit of fees for this week, but I think that's from my options. Um, I have a deal worked out with TradeStation where we get to trade equities for free, but then options, there is a small fee, but we get 20% off of that. Um, my students, at least, they get 20% off of that refunded back to them until they pay for the cost of the class. So there are some fees. Oh, wait, wait, pause for a second. So people signed up. We never said this. Maybe oh. more people would have signed up. So people signed up for your class and they use TradeStation. They mm -hmm. actually get their money back for your class through trading. Yep. Yep. Because of the reduction in fees. Exactly. Trade, trade station is kind of the bomb because they also waive the data fees. They usually charge like $100 a month for the plan that we have and they've waived that for my students. So that's already $1,200 a year that you save. And then they waive the fees for equity trades and then they reduce the fees for options and refund it back till you pay for the class. Yep. So it's, it's pretty cool. Hey, let me pause. We didn't uh, plan on doing this. If you didn't get into the hub challenge, that's fine, but you can still take Terry's class, right? That's right. Is it yep. still open? It is. And we start a new cohort every month. So if anybody's watching this one, it'd be great for you to get in. We're starting up new in October. The class is online and self-paced. So you can take the class at any time and then just jump in with our coaching calls again as we restart each month. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Where do, where do they, uh, I'll put it in the description. I'll put a link in the description. Okay. Yes, uh, there's a link in the bio. Um, yeah, I, at the end too, we can talk about 
more things, but there's like a free webinar at itradeandtravel.com. If anybody just wants to see more about how I trade, there's a free webinar at itradeandtravel.com. Cool. Um, the next part of this is acquainted, and I, and I mentioned it a little bit with the watch list, but I am, I am thoroughly acquainted with the stocks that I trade to know when there's something off. So that Zoom trade, it was just, it just hit like these all time highs up near $500. And then for the next day, all of a sudden it's a drop. Um, I think it dropped like 6%, but just if it drops $34, when everything else around it is kind of going up, that's off. But the only way that I know that is, is because I intimately look at each of those stocks every day. And that's something that I see a lot of new traders. That's a step I feel like they miss. They're kind of going so quickly from stock to stock and, oh, my friend talked about this one and I heard this one on the radio. They're not really getting to know their stocks well. And because of that, when an opportunity comes, they miss it because they don't know what to look for. So I do think it helps, even if you did just five to 10 stocks that you look at um, each night before you go to sleep or just on a regular basis, then you'll have a better opportunity to see when, when there's a chance to, to get into the trade. So that's something. And then no regrets. So this one, I have to admit, this one was a little hard for me this week. I, um, so there's actually two parts to it. One, when I'm trading this account, I can't trade my personal account. So when I took this trade, like there was a trade I took on Friday and I made 22,000 uh, on it for the hub. But that same trade in my real account, I probably could have made 2 million. So, so a little bit is like, Whew, no regrets, like we're doing this. Um, but another part of it is I left money on the table. And I know that there's somebody watching the video that's going to say, well, you know, if you were a long term investor and you had gotten to that Zoom trade, you got out at 471. But on Friday, it was 490. Like, you know, you left 20,000 on the table or something like that. And the, the answer is yes, you're right. I left money on the table. But my trading plan says that I'm trying to make 3000 a day. And my trading plan says that I want to have freedom. So I'm, I need to be able to, hey, I hit my goal. Let me get out, take that money, use it for something else, and then have the rest of my day. Like I, I did that in the morning and then I could have the rest of the day. I went on a walk. I went to the store. I talked to my mom. You know, like I had peace. So Yes, there's no, like, yes, I could make more. Other people, if you have other trading strategies, you might have said, well, I would have done this and that. Good for you. But when you have a trading plan, stick to your trading plan and stay disciplined. Have no regrets. You did your thing and be excited about it, right? So that's another teaching moment I wanted to say. And then the last thing was time and target. One of the cool things about that Zoom trade is I had put a target in in advance. And anytime you get into a trade, I think it's really important for you to know where your stop is. So if it goes wrong, where are you getting out? And where is your target? Where are you um, getting out on the, on the positive side? Those two things, I would highly recommend you put in like at the same time that you're putting in your trade so that you can consistently make income. All right, so those were the takeaways. And then for the close, I'll do this close and then we can talk some more, Karen. Um, so here we are. We are 6% to our goal. We made, we've earned $26,775. Our goal altogether is $450,000 that we can then donate to the Hub nonprofit. Our weekly goal was $15,000 and our actual was $26,000. That gives us some room in there for if we do have a loss in the future, we, won't, we still won't be negative. And then contact info, as I said, the free webinar is, you could do, even do tradeandtravel.com um, and you get to our free webinar and then check the link in the bio if you want to join the course because we do have um, a new cohort starting. We have a new cohort starting every month, but we would love to see you guys in the class to learn how to trade. Uh, that's, that's dope. All right. <laughs> uh, yay, Terry. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, this is what you think. That was a, you're a great teacher. Um, you made this so simple and I might actually consider joining the class as a result because, you know, the thing that you said most poignantly is that if you have a plan, stick to it. And I think mm -hmm. that's the hardest thing, whether it's losing weight, whether it's a financial goal, whether it's learning something, 
reading a book, you know, like yeah. we, we tend to get off of our plan, especially if we get discouraged or we have like, in the case of trading, if you have a wild day, you're going to think, oh, this is great. I can do this every day. And I love how disciplined you are. And I'm also like, you know, when you said you could have made millions, my heart broke a little bit because I know that you're doing this for charity. So I'm like grateful that you, you know, did, did this anyway, even though you could have made and you knew that too. So um, I just think that you're a good person. So I just wanted to say that. But the discipline of that, following the charts, like this is not emotional. This is not, you know, this is not a, you know, gamble. This is, I'm watching charts. I'm following the intimacy of the relationship that you have with these companies can apply to real life. A lot, a lot of us get into relationships with people that we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you, and I would say, you wouldn't get in a relationship with somebody you don't know. You wouldn't have sex with someone you don't know. Yes, people do it every day, which is why we have a high divorce rate and craziness now, outside of COVID. But yeah. if people actually did the thing that you're doing right now, which is to be acquainted with all of the stocks. I have a watch list that I follow, you know, and I have about 25 stocks that I follow. Um, I, you know, I'm looking at different things. And, and when I watch the dip, you know, I keep money in an account so I can go in and buy and then I hold, I buy and hold. Um, I'm on a dividend track. Apple's actually my first uh, growth stock. Uh, but I, uh, yeah, it's my first growth. I don't have any growth stocks. But I, I figured when it's split, it's affordable because I don't like to spend a lot of money. I work too hard. So mm -hmm. here we are. <laughs> now, can you still see me? I was trying to take the little presentation away, but I think it's probably it's staying fine. there. I can see you. It's fine. It's trade and travel, and that's good. People can see the thing, and we can see your beautiful face. Everybody's good. We're all good. Um, but I thank you for that, uh, that message. That was a word today that I, I think a lot of people needed to hear, including me, that this is about strategy. It's it's a an actual plan. Stick to the plan, even if you could have made more, you know, because the regrets will have you chasing something. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I could have made a thousand dollars more. And then next time you're gonna make a decision that's not good. And and one of the things I had to remind myself too is on that Thursday. The stock went up a little bit and I was like, oh man, like I'm gonna come back and it'll run away from me. But by the end of the day, Zoom had come back down to $460. So had I stayed in that, that stock, I would have been down at the end of Thursday. So that's why it's so important to stay disciplined because when you start getting greedy and like, oh man, I just want a little bit more, a little bit more, inevitably that's when you start losing. So yeah. It's important to just be disciplined. So go, coming into next week, what's your, you know, how do you, you know, same plan, 1%, 1% a day, uh, $3,000. Uh, are you looking, are there stocks that you're looking at? Not to get into them because we're, mm -hmm. we're going to unpack next week, but, you know, are you looking at more than five, two or three? What What's your strategy for next week? So right now I've been looking at the charts and looking at buyer and seller's levels. We had quite a few companies that come into some areas where the banks are buying. I'm always looking for where are the big banks like Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan Chase, like where are they buying stock? And we can see that in the formations of the chart. So many of them came into areas where like they're prime for buying. So I was looking at Amazon this week. I didn't make the trade, but I'm looking at it. Um, I also was looking at the whole S&P. I can trade the whole S&P index using options. So those will probably be some that come into play this week. Friday was a little interesting because it fell into those levels and then it popped back out, but it went up to some new sellers levels. So we have to see, are the banks going to sell starting Monday or are they going to let it keep going and have some more buying in the market? So we'll what have to see. Mean, right? okay. uh, because, you know, there's a lot of political unrest. You know, things are happening globally that can affect the markets. Are you looking at Wall Street Journal to see what's going on in China or, you know, are, are you just following the banks? I'm mainly looking at charts. I look at CNBC for news. So at 8 a.m. I'll be waking up and looking at um, Squawk on the Street. I believe that's the, the name. Squawk. Yeah, Jim, yeah. <laughs> Jim Kramer's on there. Um, I like looking at it not so much because I'm listening to what they say in their opinions, but because when you hear certain um, stocks come up, it'll give you ideas for what you can look at on your own. 
So I'll listen to see, hey, what's coming up in earnings? Like earnings are about to come out where companies say how they did this last quarter. That's more of what I'm looking at than just political news. So I'm looking at what does the chart say? Like we literally, like I said, we came into an area where the banks are selling. So I expect the, the companies are either going to pull back or overnight, over this weekend, they're going to jump above that level. So I'm going to be looking at that. Um, yeah, but that's that's really what I'm looking at. And you made $26,000 last week on a down market. So I just want to underscore that too. Doesn't matter whether the market is booming or busting, you can make money in the market. And you proved that you exceeded almost double a day what you were looking to do in a market that is not performing well on on the stock market we're done exactly okay. see that's All why right. i'll be smiling y'all y'all just don't it was exciting for me this week <laughs> when you show when you texted me i was like no but you had already told me so just for the record you know terry's super she's lebron she was like yeah so i'm about to i'm about to do this i'm gonna bust this out i'm gonna I'm a, that's not how she talks but that's how i heard it you know i'm gonna I'm a, I'm a, I'm a do more than what you even thought i got this i was like okay all right, I didn't doubt one minute. So uh, week one, good, thank you. I uh, hope you guys uh, are inspired. I'm actually, by the end of this, probably join your damn class, even though I've been avoiding that. Like, yes, yeah, so I can teach you how to look at charts for your Apple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my personality, because I just, I'm so, I'm, so, I'm so much of a competitor, and I do have a bit of a gambler's mentality, which is why I stay away from gambling. My father gambled, and it wasn't good, Terry. So I guess uh -huh. I, it triggered me, you know? All okay, right. we're gonna keep we're gonna keep your mental health in check. Um, yes, I I'll, I'll, right. will try not to persuade you to take the class, but I do think you should. Just to, just so you know, not to play. <laughs> another uh, another arrow in my quill. All right, let me say thank you uh, again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're amazing. We're gonna put all of her information in the description. Subscribe, hit the like button, follow Terry at I am I'm an investor or a money investor. On, yeah. on uh, Instagram. Yeah, it's, some people say, they try to do the whole I am an investor, and it's not I am, I it's am. just I'm, I'm an investor. Mm -hmm. I am a N I investor. Yeah, investor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Terry Egioma, thank you so much. I love you, I appreciate you. We'll see you next week. Love you too, talk to you later, bye Karen.